Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are playing Xeno Crisis. Now, Xeno Crisis is an interesting game because it is a 16-bit game that came out for multiple uh, consoles, but it came out a little over two years ago. Uh, I'm actually playing the Xbox uh, One version here because I got it downloaded on Game Pass just for convenience, uh, the video capturing, but I actually own the Genesis version, physical copy, uh, cartridge, instruction booklet, and everything. Uh, this came out for uh, Sega Genesis, uh, Sega Dreamcast, Neo Geo, uh, Xbox One, uh, PlayStation 4, uh, Nintendo Switch. Uh, Nintendo Switch, I don't think is mentioned on the Wikipedia, but it is on Nintendo's website. Um, yeah, PlayStation Vita. God, uh, I mean, when I when I bought this uh, off the official website, it, you know, it took a few months to get because I think it was shipped from overseas. But uh, they actually emailed me within a couple of minutes the ROM file for the Genesis version, so I could actually play the Genesis version on like a Genesis emulator if I wanted to. Oh, it's on Steam as well. It's on Steam. But yeah, I could play it on a Genesis emulator. But I actually waited. I waited for the Genesis copy because I want to play it on my Genesis on a CRT old school standard definition TV uh, <laughs> for the first time playing it. But I'm going to play it on easy just so I don't get my butt kicked with this game. Uh, controls, uh, you move with the left analog stick or left D-pad. Uh, you shoot with the right analog stick or the right face buttons if you're playing this on Dreamcast or Sega Genesis. You use four of the face buttons to uh, control your direction of shooting. Uh, if you've ever played Smash TV on Super Nintendo or uh, the arcade or even the Sega Genesis or even the NES version, which is kind of cool, uh, it's definitely inspired by Smash TV. But it still has, like, uh, you can still, like, melee and throw grenades and stuff like that. And the graphics and everything are pretty much identical. It's basically just a 16-bit port, but you can see kind of like the little extras way... I think I'm pointing the wrong direction. Way over on the side where you see like how much health you got, uh, ammo, grenades, stuff like that. Uh, the dog tags count as currency, so after every stage you use the dog tags to buy upgrades to your weapons and health and whatnot. But what's really cool about this game, because it's inspired by Smash TV, is every time you play a new game, like I was practicing this before I was recording this, um, every time you play a new game, the map layout is different. Like if you ever played uh, Binding of Isaac, you know, every time you start the game, where you go and everything is different, that's kind of like this. Like when I when I played uh, a bit ago before I started recording, I went up, killed the aliens, went forward, up, forward, whatnot. So it's kind of a different path. So that's kind of cool. Helps keep the game a little bit fresh. Other than that, the game's pretty much uh, pretty much the same each 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 time you play it, but. Yeah, it's, it's a good, fun game. It's two-player co-op. You can play two players if you want to. Got a health back there, because I just used the health. You can tumble to avoid uh, uh, taking damage from aliens. You use the trigger, but on the Genesis version, it's another one of the face buttons. Uh, you use the other trigger to pull, uh, throw a grenade, so that's kind of cool. Get hostages for points. Your ammo depletes, so if you deplete your ammo, you gotta wait for some ammo to respawn on the map. Of course, it's a nice bloody alien game. Oh, we ran out of ammo. There we go. I'm gonna try and save my grenades for the boss, because the boss is actually pretty hard. At least it is for me. Because I need to practice more at this to get better at it. Flamethrower? Oh yeah, Flamethrower. Flamethrowers in old 2D 16-bit games are a lot of fun. Like in Contra 3D Alien Wars, Flamethrower is pretty awesome. Also some arcade games back in the day, Flamethrowers were always pretty cool. <laughs> Graphics on it are really good for a 16-bit style. I mean, especially if you play the Genesis version. When you pop in your Genesis, play it on old CRT. You know, the 16-bit graphics are just great. And we're definitely going to see a lot of indie games on retro consoles. 
Which the cool thing about indie developers when they make an indie game for something like the Genesis and the Dreamcast and the Geo and whatnot, um, it can be ported over to modern systems so easily with emulators. So they can, like when they release this game, you know, you release like modern versions of it like right away. Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, but if you play this on hard, this guy's a little more challenging because he shoots a lot more stuff at you. Yeah, I got him. Nice, ugly alien. Looks like something right out of Akira. You know, they, they made this, like I mentioned, you know, they made it for Genesis and Dreamcast, Neo Geo, whatnot. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't make an arcade version of this game. <laughs> so yeah, I got 28 dog tags, that kind of counts as your currency here. So I'm going to increase my weapon power. Max that out right away. Looks like I use up most of my stuff. Music's pretty good. You know, kind of uses that uh, old style electronic Yamaha synthesizer type music. And if you still got a Genesis or Neo Geo or Dreamcast plugged into a TV, um, like an old school TV, definitely consider picking the, picking this up. Getting the cartridge. And I think you can uh, uh, you can buy the ROM file off their website if you want to. It's, pre it's pretty inexpensive. It doesn't cost that much. Helps support the developer. I don't know if, if you buy the Steam version of it, it comes with a ROM file as well. Uh, it might. Probably says so in the description. But that way if you have like um, a modded uh, Wii U or a Genesis with a flash card or a modded Wii you plug into the CRT, uh, you, can still, you can still play it on that. But if, if you are going to get the Genesis version, definitely have a 6 plug controller. A lot of cool explosions and stuff. Oh, I died. So I should have a couple continues here. Yeah. Three continues. And you can actually buy more continues you know, with the, the dog tags. It's one of the things you can buy after each stage. Yeah, if they made an arcade version of this game, <laughs> I'd probably look into pick, picking it up. A you know, big arcade stand-up going next to my Mortal Kombat stand-up. They don't even have to sell the arcade version. They can just... Uh, sell the ROM file or something like that and license it out build your own arcade machine or something like that if any of you kids out there never played games like this in the arcade you don't know what you're missing there's something so much more enjoyable about playing games like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat and just beat em ups in the arcade versus playing it online with other people that you actually get to say hi to and interact with. You don't have to worry about trash talking online because you know, you do that in someone's face, they're going to punch you. <laughs> people aren't going to do that crap. This is pretty easy, boss. Yeah. A couple of grenades in takes his health out pretty good. Of course, I am playing it on easy. Let's see, increase your health limit. I clicked on that by accident, but that's okay. Uh, increase your grenade's power. Oh, yeah. There we go. Increase your grenade limit. Or in the dunes, and holy crap, it's Graboids. 
Where's Kevin Bacon when we need him? Yeah, I mean, this is obviously inspired by Smash TV. Fun fact, one of the original creators of Mortal Kombat, not Ed Boon, but the other guy, John Tobias, I believe Smash TV was the first game, if not one of the first games he worked on before Mortal Kombat. Recently got Smash TV for both Super Nintendo and Genesis lately. Used to play that a lot back in the day. Even the NES version of Smash TV was really cool. Obviously, it was severely limited because of the hardware, but uh, you can actually plug in a uh, four-player adapter, and each person will have two uh, uh, two controllers. They hold it like this, you know, so you got your D-pad like this. So you have two of them, one in each hand. So one will control your directions, the other will control the directional shooting. So that was actually kind of cool. That was pretty creative. Wasn't required, but it definitely made the game a little easier to play. Uh, come on. Oh, throw a grenade up there. There we go. I saw this on sale on Nintendo Switch recently. But if you got an Xbox One, it's it's on Game Pass. That's actually how I'm playing it right now. I really like Game Pass. Game Pass is such a cool freaking deal. I'm not a not a fan of buying games digitally that much, but I really like Game Pass. So that's a dead end. We'll go back. But we got some more stuff out of it. I'm definitely playing better than I did during my practice run before recording this. More ammo? Yeah, I got more ammo. You never really run out of ammo, because when you do run out, there's always some that respawn. But it does add a little more of a sense of modern gameplay to it a little bit. You know, because Smash TV, you never ran out of ammo, with the exception of the special weapons. But, you know, you play anything like Call of Duty or anything like that, you're going to you're gonna run out of ammo. So it kind of brings that modern element into a 16-bit game. So that's kind of cool. And I didn't know until I started recording this because I looked up, looked up a couple facts on Wikipedia real quick to make sure I'd get my facts right. But um, I didn't know this came out on the Vita. PlayStation Vita, you know, it's an interesting handheld. Definitely kind of flawed. But it does have, uh, does have some gems on it. I had one for a little bit. Uh, Injustice, the fighting game. Uh, that was ported over to the, in, uh, to the PlayStation Vita by Panic Button. And they did a fantastic job with that. But it's too bad the console didn't have a little more life to it. I think the biggest problem with the Vita is they released two handhelds at the same time. Sony PlayStation, I mean. I mean, they released um, the Vita, and they also released the PlayStation phone that ran, ran Android. And I think if they would have combined it into the same same handheld, that would have probably taken a little more uh, technological ingenuity, but I think if they would have did that, it would have been a, a huge success. The PlayStation phone was called the Xperia Play. I still got mine, actually. I think I've talked about it before on here. But easily the probably the best phone I had 
at the time, actually. Got it handy. A little dusty. Yeah. PlayStation controls. Triggers on it. It was a sweet phone. When I got it, it was actually my primary handheld. Didn't carry a, a DS or Game Boy or PSP or anything because it ran emulators uh, pretty well. I mean, really well at the time. Um, played uh, PlayStation games, PlayStation 1 games. You know, there's a couple different emulators out there. So I actually uh, picked up both of them. You had, to, you had to buy the emulators, but, you know, the games you couldn't buy because, you know, they were, you know, there's legal reasons for not buying pirated versions of PlayStation games. But I took my PlayStation 1 discs and I actually have ISOs of PlayStation 1 games I actually own, so they're all, it's all legit. But uh, with, if, one, if a game didn't work well on one emulator, I'd use the other emulator and vice versa. So I had a, I mean, between that, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, even uh, a few N64 games like Mario 64 went pretty good and okay. Uh, on Live, you can play On Live at the time. You know, the streaming game service was the original st streaming game service. I mean, we had a great selection of uh, games to play in the on the Xperia Play, and it was super convenient to have one handheld device. That was my phone, my music player, my video game system, my media player. So I mean that was that was just really awesome and convenient. I mean I wish they I wish they still made the phone. I wish they made updated versions of it. I I definitely play it. I think I've seen like some other brands of that do similar things, but they're a little too big and bulky. almost time for me to go to bed. I think I'm actually going to bed right after I get done filming this video. Because I did not get a lot of sleep yesterday afternoon. But a couple hours ago, it's, it's about 4 o'clock in the morning right now, but a couple hours ago, I took uh, Miko out in her carrying case, took her out for a walk, just for a little bit. It was a little cold outside, so I had her, her little kitty sweatshirt on her. But uh, she did good for about 15 minutes, and she got a little restless. So I turned around and walked home. For any new watchers, uh, Mako's my cat. By the way, yes, I take cats. For, I take my cat for a walk. <laughs> she scratches at the door and cries if I don't. Uh, all right, I think I got one more continue. I got one more continue. Yeah, I got one more continue. Yeah, the one of the graboids got me there because I'm not as awesome as Kevin Bacon. It's a great movie, by the way. It's a great movie. They need to make another Tremors movie with Kevin Bacon in it. Third movie I didn't care about. Second movie was good. Uh, TV series was okay. Fourth movie was pretty good. Fourth fourth Tremors movie was actually a western. It was a prequel. I was surprised how good that one was. Fifth one was okay. I don't think I've seen the latest one. But on uh, YouTube, there's actually a YouTube channel with a guy that plays Bert. Um, I want to say the YouTube channel's uh, Bert Gumble for President. That's <laughs> uh, quite hilarious. Right. Rank E, not too well. That's okay. Make 
Alright, let's see, it's grenade power. Is it maxed out? Oh, grenade power is maxed out, okay. Let's see. Weapon power is maxed out. Bump, bump up my health. Um, speed I want to bump up because I don't think I'm used to it very well. Um, buy more continues if I wanted to. Uh, a lot of seen a lot of that green gas. Where buy the gas mask? Of course, if you ever see the stuff that's supposed to be uh, transparent, like, you know, like the gas, it kind of almost looks like checkerboarded in a way, you know, because of the pixels. Um, the Genesis could not do transparent transparency effects. Or at least I couldn't do it uh, hardware-wise. There might be, like, uh, some software out there that might have figured it out. But uh, that's why if you see games like Earthworm Jim on Super Nintendo and, and Sega Genesis, you'll see fog that looks pixelated. You know, like that checkerboard look on the Genesis and not on Super Nintendo. But back in the day when you're playing on a CRT, it kind of blended together anyway. So it, it worked back then. You know, like, most famous would be uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the waterfall coming down. You know, you're playing with, like, really poor quality composite or RF cables. Kind of turned the limitation into a strength. And honestly, video games were better back then, for, for the time. But then again, I'm 42 years old, so I'm always going to say that. There's people out there who are older than I am that say uh, Atari 2600 they were better. And that is completely okay. It's kind of like PC gaming for me. PC gaming was at its peak in uh, kind of the early 2000s. That's when it was still a lot of fun and a lot of uh, advancements were being made. I like this homing gun in this game. This is a pretty cool gun. I <laughs> ran into the alien. Uh, but anyway, that is Xeno Crisis by Bitmap Bureau. Oh, there's my dead body. <laughs> uh, one or two players. I don't think it's online. Yeah, it's not online. But um, yeah, definitely a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely give it a try. Do not pirate the game. You know, these are these are retro indie developers. Definitely, uh, definitely support them. You know, wait for a sale if you have to. You know, it's not an expensive game unless you buy it on like a cartridge or a Neo Geo or Dreamcast or Genesis, like I did. But yeah, definitely, definitely give it a shot if you like this style of game. Uh, very enjoyable, lots of fun. Uh, have a friend, have a buddy. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video and have a good day. Thank you for coming to my video. If you would like to help my channel grow, please like and subscribe and please click on this little bell icon so you never miss a future video.